Hey everybody, welcome back to VGC Regulation C, where today we're going to go over some matches that I have played in the Global Challenge so far. I've only played five games. Um, I have three wins, two losses. We're going to look at two of the wins, one of the losses here today. Um, I recorded them without giving commentary because I really wanted to focus. I really would like to do well. Um, I'm learning uh, more about my team as I go, you know. I did make a last minute change to it, so that kind of affects how it plays just a little bit. But basically, I just want to talk about it really quick here at the beginning before we get into the games. I'm playing a snow team. Um, I will probably share a rental at some point in the future. I don't think I'm quite ready to yet. Um, but more or less, we're playing a snow team, and it is the best version of snow that I have played. And it's, it's super good. Iron Bundle with Blizzard really just adds a lot to this kind of snow concept. And um, yeah. So let's talk about it. First up, we have the Iron Bundle. I am just running straight up booster energy, max special attack, max speed Iron Bundle. I think it's really good. We're running three ice type moves. We're not running Hydro Pump. I don't want to miss Hydro Pump. And honestly and truly, these three moves will get you there like 90% of the time. Um, mostly because you have Blizzard. And it does so much damage to things that even resist ice type attacks that it's it really, really helps. Um, next up, we have Obama Snow for our Snow Setter here. I'm running Bulky Leftovers Obama Snow with Helping Hand, Ice Shard, Aurora Veil, and Protect. Um, it's really, really neat. Like, the defense boost that you get from Snow, and this applies to Iron Bundle as well, you get so bulky with the defense boost from Snow, and if you, like, snack or stack an Aurora Veil on top of that, it's crazy. I have seen this Iron Bundle take a close combat um, in the Snow and only take, like, 50%. It is ridiculous how much bulk you get just from getting that 50% boost in the snow. Um, helping Hand is just, you know, some t some games you can just straight up lead Obama Snow Iron Bundle, Terra Ice, Blizzard, Hel Helping Hand Blizzard, and do stupid amounts of damage to things. It's really, really great. Um, Ice Shard is the only attacking move I'm running. I just figured it would be good for, like, cleaning things off, and I have played some games where it is just enough for me to beat, like, a Gyarados one-on-one -on -one because they can't do enough damage to me, like, over time, if that makes sense and they don't really have as much healing as I do. Um, next up, we have Great Tusk. I realized how much synergy Great Tusk and Iron Bundle have. 90% of games, you're gonna lead your Iron Bundle and your Great Tusk, and they're gonna lead two Pokemon. And either um, their two Pokemon aren't gonna wanna take an Earthquake, or their two Pokemon aren't gonna wanna take an attack from Iron Bundle, and there's very little in between. Like, really just water types. But even then, um, since we're Sash Great Tusk, you can kind of just, like, go for a two-hit KO or something like that. It's really, really nice. Um, so, like, if, you, if you're looking at them and you're like, ah, they're going to tear out a flying. Okay, cool, great. Switching Obama's no-click blizzard. They go down. Um, or they're going to tear out to, like, grass to get around the earthquake. Okay, cool. S switching Obama's no blizzard. They're going to take a ton of damage. Or if there's something that's weak to ice type, like... Um, What's a good example? Something like Hydreigon uh, likes to Terra to like fire or steel. And if they do that, well now, if they Terra to steel at least, they're weak to Great Tusk now. Um, but that's a good, that's that's like a decently good example or, um, what's a, what's a really good one that tears the steel a lot? Like Salamence uh, will do that. Um, a lot of Gyarados, they will Terra to something that's weak to ground. Um, so that they don't have to take super effective damage from Iron Bundle. Or they're Terra to like flying, and if they do that, that's fine. Freeze Dry usually one-shots them whether they Terra or not. But there's just a lot of like inherent synergy between these two Pokemon. Like if they Terra to get around Iron Bundle, well now they're getting hit for weakness by Great Tusk. If they Terra to get around Great Tusk, well now they're getting hit for weakness by Iron Bundle. I've seen a lot more Terra Water Mons today than I was expecting. Um, which is part of the reason that some of these games have been so tough because I don't have a great way to hit a lot of water types. Maybe a grass type attack on Obama Snow could help with that, but I just didn't do it. So, you know. Next up, we have Talonflame. The classic combination of Talonflame and Great Tusk is really good. Um, some games, we just want to lead Talonflame, Great Tusk, and do stuff with that. But it's also really nice uh, if there's like an opposing booster energy iron bundle or something like that because then we can tailwind, outspeed their iron bundle, and probably get the, you know, get the jump on it. Um,. Pretty standard kind of like set here, just like Max Max. Everything is pretty much just Max Max. That's what I'm comfortable using a lot of the time. Running Iron Hands, um, this is actually not correct. It is not close combat because I forgot to change it to close combat. So it is Drain Punch Iron Hands. Um, pretty standard, you know, Max Max Iron Hands. Uh, this is here to help us deal with water types a little bit. <clears throat> 
It's also just here for a slower mode. Like if we know that they're gonna lead something with Trick Room and we can't do anything to stop it. I mean, obviously, a lot of the times, um, Great Tusk plus Iron Bundle will be able to stop a Trick Room just by taking KOs. But if I know I'm not gonna be able to stop their Trick Room, it's nice to have a slower Pokemon to bring in, a bulkier Pokemon to bring in, just to like stall for a little bit of time. And then I tried a couple of different Pokemon in this last slot. I still don't know what I want, but right now I'm trying Choice Specs Fluttermane. Um, modest Choice Specs Fluttermane, because I figure I can lead it next to the Iron Bundle or the Talonflame and just Tailwind and do stupid amounts of damage. Um, and sometimes I think that's going to really work for us, so that's why it's here. Um, but yeah, that's the team. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What would you change? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, let's jump into those battles really quick here. Okay, for, so for this first battle here, this is the first game that I played. My opponent led the Masquerade and the Fluttermane, and I just lead Iron Bundle, Great Tusk. Like I said, most of the time, this is going to be a safe lead. Um, we get Booster Energy, and I'm hoping and praying that the Fluttermane is not Booster Energy, because if it's not, this is a lot easier. But of course, it is Booster Energy, and every Fluttermane that I have faced so far has been Booster Energy Fluttermane. I thought it was Speed Boosting Fluttermane. It was Special Attack Boosting Fluttermane. So I straight up could have just made a better play, and because I didn't read the screen, uh, we actually make a really funky play here. I'm pretty sure what I did is I just went for Icy Wind and Protect the Great Tusk because I was thinking that their Fluttermane would still outspeed me, uh, even after an Icy Wind, but now I see that I was wrong. But actually, this ended up being the right play, and you'll see... Actually, I went for... Yeah, okay, I went for Close Combat, figuring that um, I'll live because of Sash anyway. And I need to KO the Mouse Gerada so I don't take two attacks. But I actually missed the Fluttermane. And if I had gone for an Earthquake here, I think it would have been fine because we would have probably KO'd the Mouse Gerada with Terra Ground Earthquake. But um, it would have definitely been a lot scarier. So we go for the Close Combat. We knock out um, Mouse Gerada. We do our thing, right? And we're actually still in an okay position. Um, we're actually in a lot better position than I thought we were in, because I didn't read that it was special attack boosting Fluttermane, that's my bad. <clears throat> so me, assuming this is speed boosting Fluttermane, because why wouldn't it be, right? Um, I'm thinking, okay, I probably have to switch Great Tusk out and try to do some stuff here, because I don't want to lose Great Tusk yet. If I can get speed drops down, then I'll be fine. Um, it took them a minute to, like, send out their Pokemon, gosh. So then the Backscalibur comes in, and I'm like, okay, that's scary. They can just Ice Shard my Great Tusk. I don't want that to happen. So I'm pretty sure what I did was I just went for a really strong... Uh, did I just protect? I think I just protected and switched into Bomba Snow. Yeah. I just protect and switched into Bomba Snow. I figure I'm in a really bad spot, and honestly, looking at it, like, definitely, I could have done a lot better turn one. <laughs> and this turn, knowing now that the Fluttermane is not, um... Is Booster Energy Special Attack. Oof. That's going to be something I'm going to have to work on because I don't think it shows that on the status screen if you try to look. That is something that's very easy to miss and that's a little frustrating. So the Obama Snow comes in. We just protect because I don't want to take any... I don't want to take like a random moon blast here. I really want to... I, I'm thinking I can Blizzard and do a lot of damage to these Pokemon. I really don't want to um, have to take damage on the switch in here. This Fluttermane set was actually really weird because it was Calm Mind Drain Kiss, and that's super funky. Um, I actually would have, I actually could have just attacked because they went for the Drain Kiss into Obama Snow and just went for like a Glaive Rush, I think, which is really a weird, funky play. This is what happens, you know, low on the ladder. So I just decided to go for the Terra Ice Blizzard with the Helping Hand. Um, I figure it's got to do a ton of damage, and I can probably just do enough damage here that it doesn't matter. And maybe I'll get, like, a freeze or something. Depending on how the Backscalibur is trained, I might just straight up knock it out. And depending on, like, you know, freezes, crits, how the Fluttermane is trained, I could also maybe just knock it out. Fluttermane does have a lot of special defense, but... So what did... I did... I There was definitely a two-hit KO. I'm pretty sure they made a really neutral play here, and I'm not sure why. Um, I want to say Fluttermane, yeah, Fluttermane Calm Minds for no reason. I feel like that's a really bad play for them to make. But, you know, sometimes you live and you learn. Sometimes you think you have a free play and it is not a free play at all. Yeah, we eat the Iron Head up because of the defense boost. We get the HP back. The leftovers on Obama Snow is going to be huge in some future games, I'm feeling like. Um, I'm like, alright, well I have no reason not to just Blizzard again because it's going to KO. 
And let me just helping hand again because just in case they switch something in, we're going to do a stupid amount of damage to whatever comes in. And honestly, I didn't use this mode in testing as much as I've been using it. The Terra Ice Blizzard just does stupid amounts of damage to everything, and honestly, it's been kind of great. Here goes the Blizzard. Bam! Two KOs. Those HP bars went down so fast. We get our leftovers. And now they only have one Pokemon left, and it is the Hydreigon. Um, so Hydreigon hits the field, and I'm thinking, okay, I probably can't lose this anymore. But just in case it's like Terra Steel Hydreigon or something. <coughs> let me double protect. Or let me, I think I went for Protect and Aurora Veil because I was like, they're probably not going to target down Obama Snow unless they have like Heat Wave or something. But I went, okay, let me protect Iron Bundle. Let's save it for a second. Um, just in case they're like Terra Steel and I'm not going to be able to knock it out with a Blizzard. Let me just waste a turn. And honestly, if they were Heat Wave, that probably, they probably, if I, and if they were Heat Wave, and I hadn't gone for a Protect here, I probably would be in a lot of trouble. But they do just go for Flamethrower. They knock out Obama Snow. The poor guy. Four times weak to fire. Um, the... The quality of the video dropping drastically whenever something terrestrializes is an issue. I don't think anybody's figured out how to fix yet. Which is kind of ridiculous. I don't like that it does that. But now I'm like, okay, well, I can just click Icy Wind. And as long as I don't miss Icy Wind, I'll be fine. So let me just go for Icy Wind Close Combat. And even if I do miss Icy Wind, since, they're, since they've shown Flamethrower, I don't actually know if they have a spread move that's going to matter here. So I get the Icy Wind off, we drop the speed stat, the Close Combat's going to come in and just knock out Hydreigon. And this is a very, uh, very easy late like, cleanup for me here. The video quality dropping again because the terrestrialized Pokemon's on the field. Also, I don't think it re I really don't think it likes the snow effect. Um, which is kind of insane. But yeah, that's the game one here. Let's, uh, jump into game two really quick. Alright, game two. Uh, my opponent leads Chiyu and Goldango. Um, and I'm looking at this lead and I'm like, okay. <clears throat> I could just go for Icy Wind, Terra Ground, Earthquake, right? But, for some reason my brain goes... What if the Chiyu is Scarf, and they um, they outspeed my Great Tusk after the Icy Wind, and I just lose both of my Pokemon? Because that would be really bad. Um, that is definitely a thing that could happen here, or at least I'll lose Iron Bundle too easily, and I don't want to do that. So what I decided to do is just double protect to see what they were going to do. And, of course, they switch in Corviknight, who is immune to Earthquake, obviously and the um you'll see in a second here the goldengo terrestrializes to water which is kind of a problem i do still have iron bundle on the field who can freeze dry so i'm thinking okay this is kind of scary but <clears throat> maybe um maybe this goldengo is not max speed because goldengo has to be max speed to outspeed my great tusk right now so i'm thinking okay maybe the goldengo is not max speed maybe we'll be okay um going into the next turn because I, yeah, I actually like stopped and like looked it up here. You'll see there's going to be a big pause. I was like, how fast is Goldengo? Because I don't remember. I never run max speed Goldengo. I don't know what speed it hits. Um, and honestly and truly, like if I'd gone for Icy Wind, um, Terra Ground Earthquake, I might have just knocked out the Goldengo anyway. Maybe I played a little too safely this game. So I'm thinking, okay, whatever. We'll just go for Freeze Dry. We'll go for a Headlong Rush. Maybe we'll knock out Goldengo. Maybe it's not fast because this team overall like looks pretty like slow and bulky. So I go for the freeze dry. Freeze dry almost knocked out Goldengo all by itself. <clears throat> and then the Goldengo reveals that it is faster than my Great Tusk, which is a big problem. And also that it has Thunderbolt, which straight up just takes me out. A, um, a Make It Rain, I think, is a roll to KO. A Thunderbolt just straight up knocks me out. So that's really bad. Um, this is something that I'm going to have to get better about, but... I just gave up the Iron Bundle way too easily this game, and it ends up costing it for me. Because I know for a fact that these bulk up Corviknight sets still take like 50% from the Terra Ice Blizzard, 
And if I had just preserved my iron bundle, there's probably nothing they could have done about it now. So they bring in Chiyu. Um, I'm pretty sure, looking back on this game, that this Chiyu was Scarf. Or, uh, it could have maybe been Specs, but it's probably Scarf Chiyu. Just because, um, you'll see this turn, it's actually, or the next turn? Yeah, you'll see the next turn. It actually isn't Focus Sash. Uh, it just goes down straight up to, like, a Drain Punch from Iron Hands, I think. <clears throat> but I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I think they're gonna protect Chiyu. And they don't protect Chiyu, which is another point in favor of it probably being Scarf. Because if I had just gone for Fake Out Close Combat into this Chiyu, or, like, Fake Out, like, Earthquake or something, I would have been great. And I don't do that. So instead, we take a whole bunch of damage for no reason when I didn't need to. So yeah, I'm kind of getting in my head about these best of ones a little bit so far. Like, both... Um, both... Both turns... All three turns here, if I had just made the really aggressive play, I probably would have been fine. Um, but I didn't do it. Yeah, looking back, this has to be Scarf Chiyu. There's no way. Um, lucky for me, Iron Hands lives here. Only just barely, because we because they go for Roost. If they had maybe gone for an attack into Iron Hands, I probably would have been in trouble. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's great. Go ahead and Roost. I'm going to knock out your Chiyu, and I do only because it's not Sash, because you can see. I'm thinking it's almost definitely got to be Scarf Chiyu, which is really scary for just any team that wants to be faster than Chiyu. If Chiyu had Fluttermane Speedstat, it'd be stupidly insane. I'm really glad that it doesn't. So now they're down to two Pokemon. But it's Great Tusk and Corviknight, and they have Tailwind up. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm like, okay... Let's go ahead and Terrastalize Iron Hands. And let's try to get rid of Corviknight. Because if I let Corviknight sit on the field, it's going to be a problem now that my Iron Hands is Grass-type. And I switch into Bomb of Snow to take, you know, like an Earthquake or whatever this Great Test is going to go for. Um, maybe, maybe definitely I should have just targeted down the Great Tusk more and gotten some HP back. And, like, maybe, like, put it in a more comfortable range for knockouts. Because... I'm going to need a lot of, like, Pokemon to knock out this Corviknight. <coughs> and right now, this isn't going to cut it. So we do Terrestrialize the Grass, which means that we're going to live the attack from the Great Tusk, which is great, all of, uh, like, you know, by, its, by, the, by itself, that's really good to, like, be able to live this attack. We actually take almost no damage from it. I'm convinced that I might have lived that without uh, Terrestrializing, now that I'm looking at it. We go for the Wild Charge, but since they bulked up this turn, we actually don't do that much damage. Um, I feel like maybe if they hadn't gone for bulk up, we might have even gotten Corviknight into Ice Shard range there. And it's really unfortunate that they go for the bulk up. But now the Tailwind's gone. And I'm thinking, okay, well, they're probably going to like try to close combat my Iron Hands or something, and that's not good. Um, what can I really even do about it? I, I decide that I can't do anything about it. So I'm just going to go for Volt Switch into Corviknight. Maybe they'll just try to like set up Tailwind or something. And maybe Iron Hands lives somehow. And I go, okay, let me break Potential Sash on the Great Tusk. So we go for the Ice Shard. It doesn't do that much damage, but like that's not an insignificant amount of damage. We eat the Close Combat because of the Snow Defense boost, which is honestly kind of insane. Because Great Tusk hits like a truck. Uh, but they do Brave Bird Iron Hands here, which just kind of spells the end. If they had gone for Tailwind like I thought they were going to do, we probably would have been okay. And we might have even knocked out the Corviknight because these bulk up sets are not super specially defensive. But here I'm like, okay, I know that Great Tusk is faster than Corviknight. I know for a fact that Great Tusk is faster than Corviknight. If, if my Great Tusk can just outspeed their Great Tusk and Corviknight attacks Obama Snow, I have a chance of winning here. So I decide that I'm just going to go for Helping Hand, Headlong Rush, into the Great Tusk. Right? Yeah? Yeah. So I decide I'm just going to go for Helping Hand, um, Helping Hand, Headlong Rush, into their Great Tusk. And if I can win the speed tie with their Great Tusk, or like they're just not running like max speed, then I'll win this game. And they, in fact, um, go first. So I lose. <laughs> 
You'll see in a second here, they do go for Brave Bird. Like, straight up, like, there's there's a chance that I win this game if they if I outspeed. Because they don't even attack. Great Tusk 100% lives, and like I said, Great Tusk is faster than Corviknight. And I really think that Helping Hand Close Combat probably knocks this Corviknight out at this point. Um, I don't know, what could I have done that was safer? Maybe, like, going for Protect and then doing two Ice Shards and a Great Tusk would have probably been better. Because um, after the close combat defense drop, you'll see here, I think two ice shards could have maybe done it. Especially if they go for like another close combat or something. But unfortunately, it was just not in the cards. We do not get to do the thing. And that makes me really sad, but it is what it is. Um, it was still a pretty close game, like all things considered. This definitely could have gone either way. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into game three. All right, here we are, game three. We're playing against Lily Cole, which is kind of a weird matchup. It's, it kind of doesn't really favor either side. It's very neutral. And that's mostly because I have a way to stop the weather. So I always have the option here, if I want to, of just going straight up for um, switching to Obama Snow and clicking Blizzard. And a lot of the time, I'll do enough damage to the Torkoal that, I, that it really, I'll just live the eruption, right? This game, I'm thinking, okay, as long as they don't go for Sleep Powder into Great Tusk, I can just Earthquake for free here because I have Focus Sash. And I have the attack boost from being in the sun, since they have been nice enough to set the sun for me. So I'm thinking, all right, well, I'm just going to go ahead and protect, and I'll probably be able to at least knock out Torkoal with Earthquake. Um, they do terrestrialize the fire for extra damage, but I'm Sash. The eruption would have knocked me out anyway. It really doesn't matter. Um, and I decided I didn't need to terrestrialize the ground to knock out Torkoal. We'll see in a second here. That was a mistake. Oh, actually, it wasn't a mistake. It ended up working out better for me. Because then I could just knock out both of these Pokemon on the same turn instead of like having to deal with something else in the back. But uh, they do just go for after you eruption. Um, and they knock me down to Sash. Like I said, that's fine. I'm comfortable with going down to Sash here because I know that I have stuff in the back. I'm keeping my Iron Bundle. And the most important thing in a lot of these games here is that I keep my Iron Bundle. It is my best source of damage in a lot of situations. We get the Earthquake off. I think we do about 50% of this Lilligant. We don't quite get the KO on Torkoal, which is kind of surprising to me. Because I'm essentially like Life Orb Great Tusk right now. But I figure, alright, this is fine. Um, I don't even need to Terrastalize. Blizzard is just going to straight up KO both of these Pokemon. So I'm just going to switch into Bomb Snow and click Blizzard. And even if they try to like switch or protect, I'm at least going to KO something. And there isn't a whole lot they can do about it. And this really is like the bread and butter of this team. Like... You can do the you have your icy wind earthquakes and you have your blizzards, <clears throat> and you do these stupid amounts of spread damage. Um, watch how fast these HP bars go down. Like that is <laughs> that's really funny. But yeah, I I don't even need to terrestrialize here. I know I can get both of these KOs, so I don't. Terrestrial Pokemon are on the field doing things. So again, the quality of the video drops. I really hate that it does that. I need to figure out how to fix it. The snow on top of it, I'm sure, doesn't help. What were the last two mons in the back? I don't even remember what it was. They went down really fast. Oh, it was, um... Yeah, that's right. It was two things weak to Blizzard. So I, so here I am. I'm thinking, all right, well... I probably don't need to Terrastalize. But I'm going to go ahead and just Terrastalize the Ice for the Blizzard. Just in case this, um... This Wochien lives a blizzard somehow. So we just go for the Helping Hand Blizzard. I believe the Wochien just protects. So we're only going to take one KO at a time. They made the game one turn longer. Yeah. I don't know. Terra, Terra Ice... Um, Terra Ice Iron Bundle has been better than Terra Ground uh, Great Tusk in a lot of my games today. Which is really funky because 9 times out of 10, when I was testing on the showdown ladder, I literally would just click Icy Wind, Terrastalize, Great Tusk, and click Earthquake. And um, a lot of things do not take the Terra Ground Earthquake, but you know what does take Terra Ground Earthquake? Our good friend Iron Bundle takes Terra Ground Earthquake. So like a lot of the time, the chip from that plus the, you know, the, the Terra Ground Earthquake just KOs things. But you'll see here, like, neither of these Pokemon take a Blizzard. I don't know why they bothered to protect. Maybe they're hoping for a disconnect. I could definitely see that. Maybe they're thinking I'll make a mistake and not just click Blizzard, but I really have no reason to not click Blizzard. It's really funny seeing Obama Snow's little mustache move when it breathes. 
Um, it makes me a little uncomfortable. It's just a little too realistic for me. Maybe eventually they'll click their move. I don't remember waiting this long, but I was in the heat of the moment, so there we go. Helping hand. Blizzard. Goodbye, Wochian. <clears throat> there it is. Goodbye. Peace out, homie. And that's the game. And that was that one was really clean. I didn't lose any Pokemon here. I literally just took four KOs of Blizzard, which is really, really nice. That's what you really want to see. This game was great. Um, like I said, that, that leaves me at 3-2, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I reset to, like, look at my ranking here. But at the end, you know, as always, everybody, if you like the video, make sure you leave me a big fat like. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the next one. Um, let me know if you want to see more of this team, more games from the GC. I will acquiesce. And with that, everybody, my name is Andrew. I'll catch you guys next time.